Hello everyone, in this um, video I will provide a brief guidance to you all on how to um, on how to compose, plan for and compose your research paper. Okay, so just um, just to remind you all, the research paper is a type of the history of paper and at this point you have already, hopefully you have already decided on in um, on an approved topic of your choice so and um, and that um, and that you've done enough research to have a working knowledge of the history of your topic for you to be able to report on it um, in your research paper so once you've gathered all of your sources and your information, of course your job is to synthesize um, the information that you receive that you gained from researching these sources into a coherent yet brief history of your topic. Um, so let's first start with the introduction. Okay. Um, of course, these are just general guidelines. They are not meant to be prescriptions or specific rules. Okay. If you find that this guide um, that I am providing works for you and works for your topic and works for how you plan to um, how you plan to to retell the history of your topic, then by all means go ahead and follow as many um, follow as much of the example that I am providing here as you can. Um, but of course this guy is meant to give you some general guidelines that I think should be applicable um, to any topic that you're doing because the um, because these are, you know, general structural suggestions, right, at the structural level, not at the specific content level. So I think this kind of line should work for almost everyone. But anyway, of course, um, in this research paper, you're still applying the standard structure of academic writing, which, uh, which states that, uh, which, um, believes that you should start out any kind of paper with an introduction before you jump into the specific uh, detailed discussion of your topic. So for your introduction for the research paper, some general goals to keep in mind that the introduction of your research paper should um, uh, should reflect are, of course, in the introduction, you want to make it clear what your topic is. Of course, as with uh, all other essays, introduction is the place where you establish focus. And perhaps somewhere in the introduction, you might want to explain how a historical study of your topic uh, is relevant. And, um, and finally, you leave your introduction with a thesis statement. Okay, every paper that you submit uh, academically sh uh, for an academic pro um, assignment should have a thesis statement, some some type of thesis statement. Um, for this paper, for the history paper, your thesis statement should offer a general interpretation uh, um, that you arrive at from having examined all of these uh, sources. Right to gain a historical understanding of your topic, okay? And we'll talk more about um, how this thesis statement may sound like, or what kind of specific things may be expressed in the thesis statement. But know that there is a thesis statement required, and that it offers a general interpretation, a general overview of the history. And um, because this is a long paper that you write, um, as far as this course is concerned, it will be the longest paper that you write. It is a minimum of 1,500 words. You are certainly welcome and encouraged to go beyond the five paragraph scope, the five, the five paragraph structure um, that we're using for your shorter essays, such as cause and effect and literary analysis and persuasive. Okay, and you should. So for the so for each of the components of the S of the uh, of the paper, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion, feel free to go beyond the standard basic uh, number of paragraphs. So your introduction um, for the research paper can be more than one paragraph. It can certainly be one paragraph. It would if it is one paragraph, it would probably be a pretty lengthy paragraph so just for you know just just for convenience sake you might want to break up your introduction into two paragraphs um, but you can certainly keep it as one paragraph 
but please know that you can move beyond that structure, the, the five basic structure. So if you're going with the two paragraph introduction model, your first introduction paragraph, of course, um, you are encouraged to use the broad to narrow approach um, that my essay structure video talked about, okay, how to open your essay and how to gradually with each following sentence you're bringing the focus of your paper um, into a clearer focus, okay? So your first intro paragraph for the research paper, um, you know, uh, have a broad opening remark. Um, the aim of this first paragraph should also to introduce the topic to make clear to your reader what the topic is. And it should also set the stage for discussion and for further more specific introduction. So a sample of an initial introduction um, is here provided on this slide and it is taken from with some minor alterations expressed in the brackets. It is taken from um, an article on the BBC.org, so here's the full documentation for that. But an example is, modern readers and writers are intimately familiar with the dots and strokes and dashes that punctuate the written word. The comma, the colon, semicolon, and the siblings are integral parts of writing, pointing out grammatical structures and helping to transform letters into spoken words or mental images. Modern writers would be lost without them, or at the very least, extremely confused confused, and yet the earliest readers and writers managed without it for thousands of years. What changed their mind? Okay, this starts out with a broad opening element, right, that um, that is just a broad general statement about, you know, um, about the importance of punctuations, uh, such as the dots and strokes and dashes, um, to our reading experience. Uh, today. Then it talks about the significance of that, and then it sets the stage for discussion, right, by, um, but then it brings into focus, right, by mentioning that, you know, um, the punctuations weren't always used in written language, right? Um, earliest readers and writers did not have the convenient, these convenience marks and symbols to guide their reading. Um, and the question that is supposed to set the stage for discussion is what changed their minds? So this is the first intro paragraph. Now the second intro paragraph, you want to go into a more specific introductory um, matters. So you want to, as a general rule, to, um, to offer standard introductory remarks with the focus on articulating the topic and how it's relevant um, and its relevance. You want to provide a brief summary or overview of the major developments or changes or patterns that are evident uh, throughout history. And you want to provide brief commentary on what the history of the subject, um, on what the history of the subject teaches or reveals, and this is your thesis statement right here. I'm sorry, this is your thesis statement right here, that final sentence or two, right, and that tells you what the overall, right, what the history of the subject teaches us or reveals. Okay, so this will be an interpretation, right, the history, the historical sources or the sources that you're looking at don't necessarily tell you this, but it's something that you, um, it is something that you infer from, from having studied the history of your topic. All right, so to continue on with the introduction in the second paragraph, second intro paragraph, you'll say, okay, what the origins, because you've already established an interest in, in, um, in learning about why early, um, why early readers and writers did not care too much for punctuation and did not use them in their writing. Okay. While the origins of punctuation in Western written languages remain obscure, an examination of ancient texts combined with knowledge of ancient oral traditions, most notably the Greeks and Romans, can help to explain why the written form of language was neglected. A brief survey of the history of punctuation shows that the rise of punctuation concurred with the rise of Christianity. Punctuation marks played a central role in the struggle for power and dominance between the pagans of the Romans uh, of the Roman Empire and the early Christians of the Roman Empire. The invention, introduction, and 
and normalization of punctuation marks in written language signaled a shift in the perception of the value and power of the written language as a tool for influence and persuasion. So there you go. This intro paragraph does what um, a second paragraph theoretically or ideally should do. It had more introductory remarks. It provides a brief summary of the history and it provides a commentary or interpretation on what the history shows. Okay, that's all of that. And of course we said that this is the thesis statement and the example have that. This is the thesis statement of the example right here. Right? Based on the history, right, it seems to show that uh, the invention, introduction, and normalization of punctuation marks signaled a shift in how people viewed uh, or value writing as a form of expression, as a form of message, um, as a form of as a tool for spreading uh, spreading messages um, and knowledge and so forth, right? And they recognize um, or they realize that it is a pretty powerful and effective tool for spreading message and for reaching um, the masses and so forth, okay? All right, so you have your introduction right there, as you can see. You know, um, so after you have your introduction, of course, it's time to think about the body, right? The body is where the specific historical details and facts are presented where the actual history is retail or you know is 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 retold um so so it's very important that before you begin that you develop a pattern or some kind of plan or, or organization for how to proceed how to um tell your history Okay, how, um, and, and of course, because this is a history kind of paper, it makes sense that you would use the chronological pattern. Okay, it makes sense that as you look through your history, okay, you organize the entire history into different sections or different periods in the timeline. And that each section or period should be defined by important details or practices or beliefs or convention. Each period should have or should show some kind of monumental or important changes or development, some kind of shift or moving away from. Um, uh, from the past. Each period can be described in one or two paragraphs. Okay, and of course you'll discuss them in chronological order, but each period can be described in one or two paragraphs or more if needed. But together, chronologically, the periods should illustrate the gradual but important changes that are taking place throughout history. And some examples that I have, you can certainly make an outline. As a matter of fact, making an outline would help you to develop um, this account, the, the historical account, perhaps, you know, to use the same uh, topic for the intro as the intro, the first period in the history of the punctuation marks could talk about the oral traditions in antiquity, how ancient Greek and Roman civilization, Roman empires, uh, preferred, uh, how they, um, how um, how they prefer to transmit messages orally and the importance of oral traditions uh, as a as a method of public discourses are very very important um, in the, in this time period. The quote uh, the quote of of speaking right um, it's very important as a matter of fact Socrates right was pretty much skeptical of writing he believed. Uh, or he thought that, you know, writing would diminish our ability to memorize and to remember things, right? So that's just um, an example to show you how much importance the ancient Greeks and Romans um, placed on the oral tradition, on public speaking, on speech as a way of, of communicating persuading and transferring or transmitting messages and so forth but that doesn't mean that they that they didn't have writing they did um, but the writing uh, were not placed at were, were not deemed as important as speaking so as a result um, their text and how words are represented right um, can be very hard to read for example there would be no spaces uh, between words, right? Um, no punctuation marks to guide the readers how to um, 
how to go through the text and so forth. Okay, so in this period, these are some of the things that you want to discuss: the general attitude towards writing, characteristics of the ancient text, and but but of course, just because that you know the overwhelming public attitude or society's attitude towards writing is probably a neglectful one. It doesn't mean that there weren't individuals are living at the time, right, who opposed this this way of thinking or this way of viewing writing. There were some individuals who who thought that writing is important and that it should be reformed.